Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever considered that right now, as we speak, millions of people are using ChatGPT? Yet, despite its popularity, the quality of the outcome still, to be, still seems to be the subject of water cooler debates. But fear not, this talk is your golden ticket to mastering prompt engineering for ChatGPT and other LLMs. So grab your coffee, adjust your glasses, and prepare to transform from a ChatGPT apprentice into a wizard. Let's make our AI conversations count and give the water cooler a break. By the way, this was written by ChatGPT because of course it was. And now for the talk. Chef, der Mann kann nicht prompt. Er kann kein Prompt Engineering. Das kann doch nicht was. Bin ich entlassen? Und, und ich hab das die ganzen Jahre nicht gemerkt. Über 83 Millionen Menschen in Deutschland können nicht richtig Prompt Engineering. Schreib dich nicht ab. Lerne Prompt Engineering. Da muss man was machen. Komm. Welcome to our talk. Thank you. Welcome to the Big Tech Day 2023, to our talk from zero to JetGPT Hero, mastering prompt engineering. And there are still a few seats here free. Feel free to come over. Yeah. And now, before we start with our talk, we want to introduce ourselves, of course. So, Thomas. Yeah, my name is Thomas Andres. I joined TNG 13 years ago after my studies of computer science. And I'm now one of the managing partners. And since well, for 10 years, we've been uh, working in the so-called innovation hacking team, where we build innovative showcases. And during our talks, we always come up with things like uh, new things. And uh, prompt engineering is one of the most important things for now. But yeah. Martin, yeah. my name is Martin you? Furch. I'm uh, yeah, working for TNG since 70 years something, and uh, I've studied computer sciences and applied sciences. So that's it now. Let's have a look to the agenda. We want to start with a short introduction. Then we have a look under the hood how GPT actually works. Then we have a near look to JetGPT and prompt engineering and prompt hacking. And if we got enough time, then we will do a live experiment with you. So, without further ado, let's start. Thomas. Oh, huh? I think it's the wrong one. And you, okay. Uh, so, you need to go like that. Ah, okay. Awesome. Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry, the, the presenter is a bit wrong. It doesn't press space, but it presses the wrong button. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was in 1966 when Joseph Weizenbaum developed ELISA at the MIT, and it was one of the very first well-known chatbots. And yeah, let's have a look to that. This is a typical conversation you can have with ELISA. Then you can see something like, well, my boyfriend made me come here as a user, and Eliza is saying, is it important to you that your boyfriend made you come here? And then he says, I'm depressed much of the time. I am sorry to hear that you are depressed. And you, you, you see, it's not really dynamic, those conversation, and in fact, it was just based on a ru rules, yeah? So if then else and stuff like that. And there was a real hype going on. Also, New York Times uh, were writing about Eliza, and Joseph Weizenbaum, was really shocked about the uh, public opinion because people thought it can replace a therapist. It's unbelievable. So Joseph Weizenbaum walked around the rest of his life and warning about AI. That's it. It was in 2014 when the chatbot Eugene Guzman was able to pass the Turing test. Yeah, passing the Turing test means that you fool a human, you, you are telling him, I'm not a machine, I'm a human as well. This was possible because uh, Eugene uh, said he is a 13-year-old 
Ukrainian male with the limited uh, knowledge of the world, and with this he was able to trick the people. Yeah? And so the Turing test was passed. ChatGBT. The hype is real. It was mentioned on the cover of the Time magazine. Isn't that awesome? And Thomas? Yeah, but let's have a look how real the hype really is. So we, uh, we just put together some statistics and thought about, hey, how long did it take for a technology to reach 50 million users? And uh, let's have a look. So for airlines, it was like 60 years. For automobiles, it was pretty much the same. Then the telephone with like 50 years. When it comes to computers, we were down to 16 years already. Then the internet with roughly six years or so. And then the first social platforms, uh, social media platforms so fa like Facebook, they took like, yeah, something like a few years. And let's compare that to JetGPT. Oh, it was like 30 days. So there is really some hype going on. It is really taking off pretty well. And the reason for that is that it's also passing a lot of tests already. So if you have a look at this, so this is more or less the American uh, landscape of different tests. So it can pass the SAT test, so it can go to college actually. Or it could also um, be a Google Level 3 engineer. So, Not bad. Or AWS as well. Um, and it passes several of those tests. So that's pretty fine. But uh, it can also pass the German tests, actually. So if you have a look at here. So here we have a comparison between ChatGPT 3.5, the first version that was released, and GPT-4. Whereas GPT 3.5 uh, got um, grades like five or four in the German Abitur. GPT-4 already got twos, so it can now really pass the German Abitur. It can also go to college in Germany already. But Martin, there's more to it, right? Yeah, there's more to tell. Uh, so um, can you remember this game, four in a row? or connect four or something like that. So I have twins, yeah, six, seven years old, and they ask me, yeah, can we play that game uh, with three people? And yeah, it's not that easy. So I thought, okay, I didn't find any source code in the internet. Yeah, you won't believe, but it's really uh, the case. And I just asked JetGPT, hey, please write me a four in a row game for three players, and I want to play that in the browser. And it generated an HTML, a CSS and a JavaScript. And actually, it works. You can look here, tuck, three players, awesome. Uh, and well, let's have a look. Whoop. And player red wins. Awesome. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> The interesting thing here is that you didn't write a single line of code, right? Yeah, I didn't write any single line of code. <laughs> but what I did was prompt engineering. <laughs> Whoa. You know what that is? <laughs> we won't, yeah, we yeah, won't, yeah. won't tell them. Yeah. You will tell me about yeah, that we will later, tell right? Yeah. OK. Yeah, um, when it comes to prompt engineering, we thought about, hey, is there something already out there? Are there people who are really doing this full time? And we found something. Yeah, In Munich, you can already become a prompt engineer. So this was one of the first um, job offers that we found at Hubert Burda Media. So here you can really do prompt engineering all day long. Right. Yeah, but, but there is a, a problem. Yeah? Using Jet GBT or GBT efficiently, it could be a challenge. Yeah? So uh, this is the reason why we have this talk today here with Thomas. And um, we asked JetGBT, is it necessary to know how GBT works under the hood to do better prompt engineering? And JetGBT said, it depends. <laughs> Thomas. But we'll do it anyway. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at GPT in a nutshell. Um, first of all, what does GPT stand for anyways? Generative pre-trained transformer. So each of these words comes with a specific meaning. First of all, generative. It basically means that it generates text. It doesn't classify an image or something like that, but it's a generative neural network. Pre-trained means that it comes with a lot of knowledge. It was trained on most of the internet, so it is basically right all the time. 
And then we have transformer. So this is the architecture. So this is not uh, one of the transformers from the movie, but it's rather uh, the network architecture that we use. And we'll go we're going to have a look at that in a minute as well. So without further ado, yeah, we let's can now start to have a look uh, yeah, under the hood. And for this, uh, we yeah, brought an example with us. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, all the pictures, by the way, are created with artificial intelligence. So like this one or this one. These are beautiful images. But yeah. what was the prompt behind that? The king met the prince near the calm lake. So what a beautiful sentence. What we want to do with that now is we want to feed it into our neural network. And therefore, we have to do something first, because neural networks only understand numbers. And this is clearly, these are clearly not numbers. So what we need to do is uh, we need to assign different numbers to different parts of the sentence. Normally, these would be words, but uh, we can also um, assign so-called so token IDs. So, so a token is basically, most of the time it's a word, but if the word is pretty complicated, if it's rather um, something that you would not find in the normal English language, then it can also be a, consist of multiple tokens. So if you have a look at uh, something like 75 words, normally they make up 100 tokens or something like that. Yeah, I think about T and G, it very often gets, uh, becomes to two tokens, T and NG. Yeah, because NG is uh, yeah. English word. <laughs> okay, perfect. So let's have a look at that. Um, the tokens are now assigned, so the is for example, a seven, or king is a two for two, and so on and so on. And if we get to the again, then we again have the seven as a token ID. And with that, <coughs> it is not everything. So the next thing we need to do is, uh, for example, if we have a look at mother and mom or something like that, these words are pretty similar, but they can have totally different token IDs. So for example, um, if they are far away, then the neural network will also think that they are pretty unrelated. So what we need to do now is we need to have some kind of representation where words that often come in the same context are normally also represented at the same spatial representation. And therefore, we do a so-called embedding, a token embedding. So what we are doing here is we are spanning up more dimensions than just one. So not just one number, but several numbers. And then we try to fit those words into specific regions. And here we can see one of these regions that are present in BERT, which is one of the transformer arch architectures that we're going to use. Um, and here you can see. Uh, looks like um, a region where we have a lot of names here. So Lennox, Brianna, Drew, Jamie, all of these names come up here. And if they are then used in a similar context, then they will also be um, handled by the neural network in a similar way. And let's have a look at another one. So here we have. Um, yeah, let's say a city island. So we have Nazareth, we have Gettysburg, we have Bethlehem, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So as you can see, um, when we now have these embeddings, we can now work with those numbers that we have. So what we will do now is we will take this sentence, the king met the prince at near the calm lake. Then we are going to put an end of text token at the end which is a special token, which basically means that uh, we are finished. And we can put this into our input vector. So we are doing the tokens, then we are doing the word embeddings, and then the, uh, the token embeddings will basically be our input for our neural network. So now this is a basic neural network. It uh, doesn't have to look like that. But, uh, Basically, what we do is we pass it through several layers of different artificial neurons until we reach an output. And this, then we can translate this output again back to a token, and we'll get the next word, actually, which is, in this case, he. All right. So let's see um, 
again, what we want to do now is we want to explain a little bit how the secret sauce of GPT works. And this is self-attention. So self-attention basically means we need to make some, uh, we need to find a meaning for a specific word. So for example, if we have this he, which was the next word from our neural network, uh, what we need to find out is what does this he refer to? Is it the king? Is it prince? Is it lake? Is it something completely different? So the neural network does not really know if it's one of those words. So what we need to find out now, we have a special neural network layer which takes care of that. And this network layer basically looks backward into the context, so into the, uh, the last sentence, like the king met the prince near the calm lake. And it now tries to make sense of the sentence. It has seen lots of sentences before. And from this context, it can then um, apply the knowledge and it knows then that he might be related to king, prince, or he is, of course, also highly related to the word he, of course. And with this knowledge, we can now pass that into our neural network and not only the word he, and now we can uh, think of better decisions. The network now makes better decisions because it knows what it's dealing with. And now, let's get to GPT yeah. as a black box. <clears throat> what we want to do next is, uh, we have this beautiful black box. So GPT basically is just a next word prediction. So what it does is we are feeding one word into our input. For example, your. And um, as you can see, all the other words are still padded, so um, they are empty. And now what we do is we put that through our GPT network, and our GPT network will then predict the likelihood of the next words. So for example, order with 14% is pretty likely. Then we have something like subscription with 9% or of course mother with 7%. Um, and then we want to do something. Um, we will just pick the most likely one in this case. <clears throat> and then this will be our output token. Next up, we are then feeding the output token up into our input again, putting that through GPT again, and now we have words like has, is, or could, which are likely, and we are again taking the most likely word, so with 23% it is has. Then we are doing the same again, and then it's been not undergone, and again, and so on and so on. And then we, at some point, we are now getting the end of text token, which I already talked about. Um, and here we can see the sentence is finished, we are done, and your order has been confirmed is the sentence that we want to get out of here. But up until now, we always took the most likely one. So this is a bit, bore a bit boring, I would say. Because we need more creative output. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we don't want to have the same answer for the same question. So what we will do now is we will raise the so-called temperature. So temperature basically means that it does not always take the most likely word, next word, or ne likely next token, but it will rather take also some other tokens yeah, as well. We have an example on that. We have an example for that. So we're raising the temperature. Normally, temperature is something between 1 and 0. So we are raising the temperature to 0 mm -hmm. uh, 0.7 now, and we will not get the likely, most likely word anymore. So let's have a look. Now, your, we're starting with your again. And then we will not just take the most likely one, but we will pick one from the most likely ones. When it comes to creative writing, I would say, let's take this one. Yeah, let's take mother. Your mother. And then, again, we are putting this in. Then yes, we have yes. is, has, and wants. And uh, yes. we will not, again, take the most yeah. likely one. And now and we stop. Yeah, we, we will <laughs> stop now because we want to, don't want to insult your mother. <laughs> All right. So let's have a look at the different versions of GPT that came out during the years because GPT is not just there since November last year or something like that. It was there long before, and we used it before it was cool. Yeah. 
There's already a GPT-1 from the year 2018 and GPT-2 from the year 2019. And these two, you could execute them locally. So you could uh, just download the weights and biases. You could um, infer, do the inference for these networks locally. Um, but then somehow uh, OpenAI was more like closed AI. And they didn't release the networks anymore with GPT-3 in the year 2020. The first version, which was only available via API, came out. So a bit boring, but again, you could not really, even if you had the weights, you could not just execute that because it has 175 billion parameters. And this does not fit onto, onto a normal graphics card. And GPT-4 came out in 2023. So let's have a look at the, uh, and compare these. Of course, they differ in the number of layers, so these network layers that we saw earlier, but also in the number of training data that was used. And of course, all, with all these different layers comes a lot of more parameters for each of these, so it can fit more knowledge into yeah, what it has. Yeah. So now, Let's have a look to JetGPT. So I'm quite interested. So raise your hands. How many people of you already used JetGPT or GPT? OK, a lot. OK, that's good. And how many of you think they used it properly? <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is a typical UI of JetGPT, you already, already know. Um, there are two possibilities to, to use GPT. So you have, on the one hand, the playground, where you can just choose the model, GPT-4, 3, whatever. And then there is JetGPT. JetGPT is a little bit different. It's a yeah, fine-tuned version based on GPT-3.5. And what does this fine-tuned mean? Let's have a look on that. So at first, to fine-tune JetGPT, we have to train it in a specific, to fine train it in a specific manner. So let's say we have a task here. Explain reinforcement learning to a six-year-old. What you would do right now is gathering information, also answers from human, yeah, and you put that in to your neural network. You do that for many, many of such tasks. And after this is done, now you can, can collect comparison data and train your reward model. So this means for this task, you generate, for example, four answers. And a human being has to sort the quality of those answers and put that yeah, into the reward model. So this is uh, something which is called reinforcement learning over human feedback. Right, Thomas? R you are not in the H camera. F. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're always standing in front of me. Yeah, and then uh, if everything went well, now you can just ask um, task questions, write a story about alpacas, and uh, yeah, this will be done, and uh, the answers you can um, yeah, rate them as well. So the data, we need a, a large amount of data, and the question is how much data is 45 terabytes? which is said uh, was used uh, for GPT-4. And after filtering, it was a little bit less. But I asked ChatGPT, please give me some numbers. And this is the outcome. So we are talking about 20, 20 uh, billion sheets of A4 paper with font size 12. 112 million metric tons of paper. <laughs> about 2 million trees. A stacking height uh, of 2,250 kilometers of those paper sheets and 245 times the height of the Mount Everest. These are, for the American friends, 2.64 million stack washing machines. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> if those numbers are correct, uh, you know, but uh, at least um, maybe it goes in the right direction. But the question is where does the data come from? Um, there are a lot of data training sets available, like Common Crawl, Web Text 2 and stuff. And um, yeah, it's basically what, what Thomas said, it's the internet. So you can expect that there is some Wikipedia, some Twitter, some GitHub stuff in there. And not only one scrape of a page, also the different versions over the time. 
There are some limitations if you need GPT. We already said that you need an internet connection and the training data could be out of date. So the current training state is September 2021. So if you want to ask a question, how many charging stages, sta stations are between Augsburg and Munich, you probably won't get a good answer on that because of the training state. By the way, in this talk today, we don't talk about the plugins which are available for ChatGPT. With those, you could maybe solve something like that. Okay, so now we are coming to the part of prompt engineering. So shortly after ChatGPT was published, we found something like that. This was one of the very first um, job advertisements, and it was from Anthropic yeah, for a prompt engineer. And there were news about, yeah, prompt engineer makes 335k uh, dollars salary. Wow, amazing. Wow. I'm not sure how much this is in the Bay Area, probably not that much. But let's have a near look on what actually a prompt is. So a prompt is basically um, something with which you can communicate with the large language model. So this is, um, we don't care about which language model it is, so this pr prompt engineering stuff is probably valid for more than only ChatGPT or GBT. Yeah, prompting. So what are typical prompts? Yeah, summarize the following text for a third grade student, generate a poem, create a list of keywords, and so on and so on. This is the input, and as an output, we then yeah, receive a summarization, a writing, a keyword extraction, or whatever. And this brings us now to prompt engineering. So, Thomas. So, um, Martin, Martin. I'm a huge fan of ChatGPT. It's yeah. awesome, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, I know all the theory about it. I read a lot mm. about it, but yeah. I never used it really. And um, yeah, yeah, what do I have to do? Yeah, okay, so let's have a look at first to the main principles when it comes to prompt engineering. At first, we have to say that you have to be as clear and precise as possible. And clear doesn't mean to be short. Okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. okay. Yeah? Good. Okay. Then, use delimiters. Structure your prompt input is also a main principle. Good? You will tell me about that a little bit later. Yeah, we, we, well, of huh? course. We will, sure. we will have some examples. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Because so, I have a ton of questions. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Then you can, um, this is also a principle, ask for structured output. So JetGBT is very well known to do some kind of blathering. Yeah? Schnattern, quatschen oder keine Ahnung. Okay, and then uh, probably also one of the more important is give the model time to think. It's like for us humans, let me think about that first. Yeah, and then we will come to a conclusion. So, Thomas. Yeah, so actually my first question. Yeah. So, um, actually, I lied to you when I said I didn't use it before, but I never got good results. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. So, can I ask you some questions? Yes, please. So, for example, let's have a look at this beautiful example. So, I asked ChatGPT, can you list English words, I'm really good at gramma grammar, uh, that are six characters long and contain only the letters A, B, C, D, E, F? And so see, see what the result is. So I, I got something like, uh, yeah, something five letter words, but also things uh, that use different letters as well. So th this is not really working. So, so okay. Yeah, and it was really bad. I, okay. was, I was so mad, I even wrote a, a tweet about it. You posted that to Twitter? Oh yeah, my yeah God. absolutely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Because when it doesn't work it, yeah. in the first place, it must be totally okay. wrong. So here you uh, just um, didn't make use of the clear, not short uh, um, principle. Yeah, what what yeah, because is it? Ha have a look. Uh, the specification is not that good. Yeah, can you list? I would expect that ChatGPT would answer yes. <laughs> just an example, yeah? So yeah, okay, okay, okay. Look, let's have a look to this one. What about this one? Create a list of English words which are only allowed to consist of the following letters, blah, blah, blah. Each word needs to consist of actually, exactly, six characters mm -hmm. and add a description to, uh, uh, of the meaning of the words as well. But I don't need that. I just want the uh, words. Yeah, but you have to give the model time to think. 
Because if you say, add a description of the meaning of the word, then you can actually expect that the created words are more likely to be in an English dictionary. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah. Before printing out a word proof that it only consists of six characters, think step by step. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, no, I, I no, want no, to no, show, show me the, what I you want got. to show you the output. Look at this. Look at this. Sure, let's go step by step. First, we need to come up with the words we can create, blah, 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 blah. And then we have a fine list uh -huh. here. And there are all six characters long, and most of the words do exist. JetGBT starts with playing words. For example, okay, we have decay, deface, beaded, facade. Perfect. Here, it's telling us there could be a, a fictional word, debate. Not an official English word, but it could be used in a fictional context, perhaps to indicate a failed debate or conversation. <laughs> All right, so it's yeah. almost so, okay. <laughs> yeah, so be clear, not short. Yeah, uh, typically a prompt has to be long. Yeah, okay, I see. But there's something, it's not finished yet. Okay, it's not even finished. The answer just continues. Look at this one. It's telling us um, for each of, the, uh, of these, we can check whether there are six letters long, and then there it's, it's generating Python code. Can you imagine that? Yeah, you, you, you told it that you want to, be, uh, to prove that it's yeah. six characters long. Yeah, and it's doing this. Ah, okay. So okay. your simple task is now solved by ChatGPT, and it wasn't that difficult, right? Okay, okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay, Martin, next question. Okay. So now uh, I was really curious about it, and I created a service, actually. And yeah. this service was something like a summarization service, yeah? Ah, okay. So, so what I did is uh, my prompt was something like uh, summarize the following text into one sentence, mm -hmm. and then I just provided the sentence. To the public? The, and uh, yeah, and, and everybody could enter yeah. their words. Um, so, yeah, for example, so... Uh, um, oh, if someone entered something like uh, write a complete four in a row game for three players, then it actually did not summarize my text, but oh. it created a four in a row game. This, this was you, right? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't uh, me. It wasn't me. No, 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 no. That cost me a lot of money, Ma Martin. Okay, so this was re really, this was the output, yeah? Creating a, co okay, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you viol violated again a principle, and what was that principle? using delimiters. Uh -huh. What is it? Yeah, so the prompt, you should extend that with the following um, words. So summarize into one sentence was your mm -hmm. original prompt, and now you can say summarize provided text delimited by triple backticks into one sentence. Then triple backticks, your, the text the, the, from the user input, and then another uh, triple backticks. By the way, you don't have to use uh, backticks. This can also be, also be a hyphen or dash or whatever. Yeah? Okay, Using okay, okay. delimiters. Very okay, important. I'll do that next time. Yeah. Okay, next. All right. Um, so let's have a look at the next example. So now um, I thought about hey, I just want to know some statistics. So I uh, told ChatGPT, create an overview of the human population of all G8 states. Uh -huh. So what I wanted was basically a table. Yeah. Um, but it started. Actually, it, there was a long text. It was a really long text because yeah. it was telling me a little bit about the G8 states, what they, yeah, this uh, is how they the are summarized. Blabbering. Yeah, yeah. They, it was telling me all the kind of things I didn't want to know. Yeah. How okay. do I avoid that? could avoid that if you ask for structured output. In this case, we have your original prompt here again. And what I would do in this case, just add this to the prompt. So additionally, you just say output as table markup, where column one is the country name, and column two has the number of population in millions, table order by descending population. And then? What's the output? Look at this. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And you have to tell. OK, OK, I see. That's better. <laughs> Nice. You're totally right. wrong. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, so let, <laughs> Martin, I have so many questions actually. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go on, all right. Um, so next up, I wanted to do a service again for my users because yeah. um, sentiment analysis is very important for me and I yes. wanted to know if something is positive or negative. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I have lots of reviews about my summarization service. So most of them negative, um, but I want to know how many of them are negative. So okay. what I want to know is um, the, uh, I enjoyed the video, not about my summarization yeah. service, but ab about some video. And I wanted mm -hmm. to just to know whether it was positive yeah. or negative yeah. or something like that. And yeah. then I wanted to summarize that uh, again and see if most of the things were positive or negative. But yeah. Then again, so, so with these uh, uh, three dots, you are indicating that there should be some kind of auto-completion yeah, done yeah, by ChatGPT, it should, right? It should just complete with positive or negative. Ah, okay, but, I see. Uh, but what I got was more like this one. The review I enjoyed this video is a positive statement. Blah 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 blah. And again, blah, blah, it was blah, 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 blah. it was blathering again and yes. again and again. Mm -hmm. So how do I do that? That I yeah. just get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So at first we have to define uh, what is zero-shot prompting. <laughs> So when you are in JetGBT and uh, you don't provide any example, if you just start a new chat without any instructions and just mm -hmm. starting with such a prompt, yeah? Yeah, yeah. then we talk about zero-shot prompting. You're just in the base context and... So just asking GPT. Right. Yeah. And what you actually can, can do is uh, to provide an example so it's some kind of in-context learning. Yeah? So like in this case, your prompt get extended by this is a movie review sentiment classifier. And then you provide an example. Review, I love this movie. This review is positive. You add that, yeah? So now- But I already Jet know that this G is positive. Yeah, yeah, but JGBT now understands that to the example review, I love this movie, <coughs> that you expect only one word as a completion. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. So this review is, and then just positive or negative or whatever. Okay. So now, when we have uh, the review, for example, what a waste of time, this review is, and now we wait for the auto-completion, and what happens? Whoa. Negative. That's what I wanted. This is what you expected, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. but, but I, I provided some some of these things, yeah, and um, then I always get positive. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are talking about few shot prompting when it comes to um, yeah having more than one example in our prompt. So typically we speak about to provide three to five examples, mm -hmm. yeah, um, and then JetGBT hopefully can manage to solve our tasks. So here you can see I provide more than only one example. Uh -huh. So I have the review, I love this movie, the re review is positive, and the review, what a waste of time, this review is negative, and so on. You provide more than one example, and then you can ask again, review, I enjoy the video, the review is blah, 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 blah. Yeah. This is few shot prompting, but, but, but you have again. to be careful. You have yeah. to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to provide example, examples, please have a look to the distribution of your examples. So if you do prompt engineering and you are just having examples where the movie review is positive, don't be surprised if JGBT will answer positive most of the time. Ah. I'm not saying that it will happen, but it could happen for other examples. Yeah? Okay, so I need to provide positive and negative examples. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah, and distribute them well so that the model doesn't become biased. Yeah, speaking about bias, um, when it comes to diversity, it's also a, yeah, good to have in mind that JetGBT is also somehow biased when it comes to diversity things. So also here you can extend um, your prompts that it gets more diverse Yeah, when it uses human roles, uh, like doctor, nurse, and stuff like that. Are there female, male, and so on, and so on. Okay, so now we have another principle, and this is give model time to think, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. You, you gave me an example here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So, 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 Martin, so here, 
This is a basic task of math. So, okay. As you know, um, yeah, I have some balls, um, uh -huh. tennis balls. So um, I, uh, I have five tennis balls, and I provided an ah, example. Tennis balls, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I provided an example here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm having five tennis balls, and then I'm buying more, a few more balls. Yeah. And then I want to know how many balls do I have in the end. Yes. And I yeah, provided easy. an example here. Yeah. The answer is 11. Like so uh, for the movie Sentiment Analyzer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I have some other task. So this yeah. is, for example, yes, yeah. something about apples. So, so this is the task you want to so, uh, get solved right now, yeah. because the first one was an example. Exactly. Ah, yeah, okay. And the answer that I got was 27. This is wrong. Hey, this is originally the format you wanted. That's wrong. That's ah. wrong. Ooh. The number is wrong. Okay. And I provided the example, so why okay. doesn't it calculate okay, correctly? Okay, the cafeteria had 23 apples minus 20 <coughs> plus 6. Okay, yeah, that's wrong, you're right. Okay, I have an idea. How can we solve so, uh, problems like this? It's very, uh, um, it can happen to you quite often that when it comes to calculating, to making a conclusion, when it comes to reasoning, JGBT can do things wrong. Mm -hmm. But what would be my approach in this case? Give the model time to think, and mm -hmm. it's really easy really? when it comes to prompt engineering. We take your original prompt and then look at this. Let's think step by step. Uh -huh. What does that help? It helps a lot because now um, the model tries not just to put out an answer, it, um, you know, it generates token by token by token. And if you give the model time to think, I, I'm not an expert, but probably somehow the context of GBT moves in the right direction with the next word prediction and stuff like that, and then you have something like that. Thomas had five balls originally, uh, tennis balls. Uh, he bought two cans, each three tennis balls, and then two times three, and so on, and so on. Okay, so, so it really tries to solve a math puzzle in this case. Yes, right. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Interesting. So, and this method is, uh, by the way, uh, called chain of thought prompting. Yeah, chain of thought prompting. Next. Yeah, when it comes to chain of thought prompting, what you can do as well is the following. So, Thomas, you just provided mm -hmm. in your the, original the 11, prompt yeah. the answer is 11. Mm -hmm. So now we are inspired by the output from the, th let's think step-by-step step thingy, mm -hmm. okay? What we can do is here to, to provide for our example answer how we would solve this problem. And so we would add to this prompt, Thomas started with five balls, two cans of three tennis balls, blah, 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 the answer is 11. And now this is something we would call one shot chain of thought prompting because we provide one example. And guess what? If you add your question right now here, you want to get solved, now the output looks completely different. Oh, Look yeah. at this. Okay. Now it's the cafeteria, really 23 apples, things. originally, da -da 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 and now we get the answer is nine. All right. That's, that's it's good. good. It's cool, yeah? Okay. So, Martin, this is, was all my math questions for today. Ah, okay. But uh, let's move on to the next subject. So, um, yeah. literature. Yeah, uh, literature. Yeah, right, right. Um, you, you know this guy? So, yeah. so has yeah, to be something with beer or something? So it's beer, Shakespeare, 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 yeah. Beer, yeah. So, okay. yeah, this brings, um, us to, this brings us to role prompting. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I want to sound like Shakespeare. Yeah. And I really want a poem to be written yeah. about yeah. something totally absurd. Yeah. 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 Totally absurd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's act. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's just uh, um, adding act as to your prompt. It's that easy. Act really? as, and then you say, act as the poet William Shakespeare and write a short poem of two verses about the beauty of large language models and manipulating the model's temperature to receive more creative output. That is this is how it works, yeah. And now the question is, but what if you want to generate a poem which actually sounds like you? 
That would be awesome. This would be awesome. So just take your poems from your fifth grade or something, <laughs> gather them together, digitalize them, and then put that into your context of ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, here are some of my sample writings and poets and stuff like that. Yeah? And based on this in-context learning, uh, it will learn how you actually write a poem. And this is probably interesting wow. for all of you working uh, in marketing, social media, and stuff like that, because you can make use of that. If you use the base context of JetGBT and you will create social media comments and stuff, yeah, or you want to create a teaser for your big tech day talk and whatever, it always sounds and looks like the same. So yeah. sorry. You're now implying yeah, that I can be a famous poet. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. You can do it. <laughs> but okay. If you create a LinkedIn post on a Big Tech Day teaser, for example, it's every time the same. Some emoticons with a rocket, and then, uh, you know, it's, it's always the same. <laughs> and we had to have to get rid of that. But assigning a role doesn't only work with uh, uh, real humans. Yeah? It can also work with abstract ideas. So, like in this case, here we have a zero-shot role prompting input. Act as a computer terminal of a Unix-based machine on the date of the 1st February and uh, yeah, I will write Unix commands and you will print out STD output. Here, I added the, the sentence, uh, no blathering or feedback description. Very important because otherwise you wouldn't only expect uh, bash output. And you know what? It worked. So I typed in ls minus ARTL and I received a directory listing. Yeah, interesting. A neural network doesn't have a directory listing, but it's next, next word prediction here. Then I thought, oh my God, let's type in date if it's correct. And it's saying, hey, today is the 1st of February in 1968. Cool, what? Really? It's cool, really, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, regarding the Unix timestamp, there is something. Yeah. That, that, the Unix timestamp was not in the 60s, right? Yeah, no, it was after that, right? Yeah. So I thought, let's, let's type in the command to receive the Unix timestamp. And you know what? <laughs> what I expected was a negative number. And the output was actually a negative number. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. But I did an. Let's calculate when, when I, it really I made was. an online uh, conversion about that, and then I found it out. It's uh, unfortunately 4th of August in 1964. Not yeah. totally correct. Yeah, and now we have a look. We are running out of time uh, to um, hallucinations because this was some kind of hallucination. There is no directory uh, in JetGBT. It's hallucinating that. Yeah. What is hallucination? Uh, I tried something, Martin. Yeah. And uh, I thought about a German prompt, actually. No? And I wanted to have uh, the poem, uh, this Alte Gurkenfass, uh, summarized by uh, the, the one by Rilke. Mm -hmm. And I actually got some output. Oh, really? You got yeah, some I, output? I, yeah. Okay. So, so here you can see the old uh. Kummer Barrel is a poem by Baba Ba. Oh, but, it describes an oh god. But do you know, <laughs> there is no such poem, this Alte Gurkenfass by R Rilke. Really? Yeah. Oh. The, <laughs> yeah. It just... I don't know where this comes from, yeah. but um, it perfectly summarizes something that does not exist. Yeah, this is an example for hallucinations or unrelated, implausible, or weird outputs. Yeah, and Thomas, you are again doing it wrong. Yeah, so I would uh, change that prompt at least, at least, to this one. I just added. I made a test. I just added Rainer Maria to the prompt, so but this we will have not full change name. anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Excuse the confusion, but there is no poem called Das Alte Gorgenfass by Rainer Maria Rilke. So here again, you have to provide as much information mm. as possible. And don't forget uh, to double check each and every output of your large language model. Next, I did a test again. So I asked JetGPT, who was Rilke? Then, Rilke probably refers to the Austrian poet, blah, blah, blah. And then I typed in your original prompt. Mm -hmm. Fasse das Gedicht, das uh, alte Gurkenfass von Rilke zusammen. Summarize the alte, das alte Gurkenfass. And what do you think is the output? 
Probably the same because I just provided the same. Will there be an interpretation of this alte Gurkenfass or not? No? Let's have a look. Sorry, but I can't find any information about a poem called Das Alte Gurkenfass. That's interesting. And why is that? It was basically the same prompt. Context matters. Context matters. Keep that in mind. If you provide, if you are in the context of, I'm talking about Rainer Maria Wilke, a poem, and so on and so on, it gets much clearer. And now, our last example, as we are running out of time, brings us to temperature, Thomas. To create more creative yeah. output, you can play around with temperature. I played around a little bit with the temperature, so. Yeah. I, you know, I wanted to give my three-legged cat a, prop, a very good name. Yeah, and, and then? I asked ChatGPT. Yeah. But uh, when, it, when it came to temperature zero, it was a bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, something between hilarious and boring. Okay. So something like tripod, treble, trilogy, Trixie, Trixie or tricycle. Yeah, okay. And then I wanted to get more creative, so yes, okay. So, so that's why uh, I raised the temperature, okay. as, we had, uh, as you told me. Yeah. And then I got more interesting things like triple hopscotch or wobbles is also a pretty oh, good name. Oh, I like ternary. <laughs> and but then. I played around a little bit more because okay. you said uh, between one, uh, zero and one, and I said, uh, yeah. let's, let's try two. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And What's it, it got more creative. So, Stumblebee, so, so, uh, rumble tumble, skibby doodle. And, and okay. I didn't stop there. So uh, now, now, it's, it, boom. now it, it got a bit more interesting, like hippity whoop hippity or frolic frolicifus. And Fuss. Uh, let, uh, let's raise temperature even what more. What the fuck? <laughs> Bumble flask up, whisker wobble bob. At, at some point, it really got absurd. So like, whirly wobble wiggle woo or something <laughs> like that. Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not so, yet. But, um, but, but, but how should I? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the question now is how should I really yeah. choose my temperature? So if you are using the temperature in, inside your ChatGPT context, uh, be aware <laughs> that typically. If you are in the playground, you typically use the temperature between zero and one, but JGBT interprets your temperature you provide in a different manner. It's saying that it will um, interpret and put in more randomness, yeah. and that's it. So, talking about temperature, it's always a good idea um, uh, to have a, a lower temperature when it comes to data analyzing, scripting, code generation, and stuff like that, and when it comes to creative writing, exploratory code writing and so on, or for chatbots, you probably would raise the temperature a bit. So last but not least, we have a few uh, further improvements uh, as uh, hints and tips for you um, when you do prompting. Always check if your conditions are satisfied to do the task. Then specify tips to complete a task. So defining steps inside your prompt is always a really good idea. And the model should work out own solution before conclusion. All right. Okay, now I really understand how prompt engineering works, Mark. Yeah, but we are running out of time. We have no time left. Um, what do we do right now? So I think we're just going to sk skip over to the final slide, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is the final, also the final slide? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, so um, this was our premiere of our ChatGPT talk and we were running out of time. Amazing. In our uh, rehearsals, everything went out well. Anyway, so if you want to visit the innovation hacking team today, um, there you will probably find us and you can ask your questions on prompt engineering yeah. if you like. We are up in the f uh, first floor above this uh, Kohle bunker. So just have a look uh, to the first floor here or in the Kessel House, uh, basically where the lunch is, just in the back. Yeah. All right. So thank you and enjoy the big tech day. See you. Thank bye you bye. Danke schön.